Here we are, everybody. We come to a close on Peacemaker Season 1. Season 2 is officially happening with James Gunn coming back to write and direct every single episode. We have no release date yet for that, but I am very excited to talk about Peacemaker overall in full spoiler details, as well as the series, or series, Season 1 finale, Episode 8, Cow or Die. I really, really liked this episode and overall just came to love this entire show. This is a show that I looked forward to every single week and in general just put a smile and laughed and I can't believe that I seriously do this every week. I can't believe I like was just not excited for this, that I didn't trust James Gunn. Uh, Peacemaker was my least favorite character with the Suicide Squad and now he's one of my favorites. Like They did such a good job making you care about Christopher Smith peacemaker and john cena did such a great job with his performance and overall this last episode was action-packed and yes let's talk about that cameo holy shit i was right i knew who they were gonna bring in didn't expect the flash but we'll talk about that but i overall loved this entire show it is one of the biggest surprises and i can't wait to re-watch this entire show so overall let's talk full spoilers for peacemaker make sure again to hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep talking movies and tv over here on a daily basis as well as leave your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section did you love the show did you hate it did you hate the ending what do you think of that cameo i thought they were gonna give us henry we'll talk about that just soon but overall Action packed, ferocious ending. They get to the butterfly's lair. How are they going to stop it? They're looking at all of Christopher Smith's masked peacemaker. Which one will be the best? Anti gravity? Nope, that flies up. We get the freaking sonic boom one. How are we going to get over there? Eagly can do it. He contacts Eagly, and Eagly fails <laughs> peacemaker, which, again, everything in this show, every single line and dialogue <clears throat> is so damn funny. When Eagly started going in the other direction, I lost it i lost it i lost it laughed my ass off and i found it to be so much fun and just seeing how it's flying off in the opposite direction then he has to everyone's looking for the mask of course then we see he's having some ptsd with of course his father who had died which i think was a nice touching aspect to of course peacemaker as a character and it makes sense for this they find the mask they go for this how are we gonna get it well John's gonna have to go in there, die beard, and he goes in, gets scared when he sees the giant kaiju caterpillar creature, drops the mask, leaves, pretty much has that emotional moment, which again is something that I think James Gunn did such a good job in, was providing emotional moments for almost every single character, making you understand each and every one of them to a certain standpoint. And this moment with Diebeard, of course, or of course just John, is was I thought very important to his character. And I really liked how they actually referenced the beard thing and how they reference how Peacemaker had made him feel. And I think that's the whole thing about humanity. And I, I love that. It was just such a small, subtle detail that really added a lot. But then of course, Sonic Boom, baby! Boom, 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 explosions. And then of course, Peacemaker, Vigilante, and Hardcore go in flaming and kicking ass with their bullets and that action set piece was just awesome like james gunn knows how to shoot action and i was just having a thrill ride the music kicking in again the intro song playing in there which again every time the intro plays i'm dancing along i'm hyped and i i need season two now like i i'm so on cloud nine with this show i'm so surprised but this action was shot so greatly. Hardcore, Vigilante, Peacemaker, all kicking ass. But it comes down to, you gotta stop the cow! Peacemaker leaves them. And of course, Hardcore and Vigilante get very fucked up and injured in this moment. Which leads, of course, Danielle Brooks' character to run on in to save the day, potentially, with the human torpedo mask. She's kicking ass, flaming guns, boom, 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 saves Hardcore from getting a butterfly in her. And then they all go down below, which we have Goff fighting Peacemaker. Peacemaker, in a sense, is like, hey, like, or Goff pretty much goes to Peacemaker and is like, hey, like, come with us, see what we have. And selling some stuff on there. And of course, at this point in time, she messed up with the, the first torpedo launch. And in this moment, I was actually conflicted was what is Peacemaker going to make? This is a major choice. And it actually made me like go back and look at like RPGs or any sort of game that I've played where you do have to make serious choices like that. And I felt like I was in Peacemaker's shoes is like you have two major choices. Which choice are you going to decide? And the fact that, you know, he did go with killing the butterflies, stopping the caterpillar, or other known as the cow, by using the whole human torpedo, which was just disgusting when it shot. Like, that was just nasty. But again, it works for the tone. 
kills off the last two butterflies, but we know, of course, he left Goff to live. And from then on, he saved the day. He thinks, maybe, because he knows that he at least saved his friends. Because if he didn't kill them and didn't kill the giant cow, they probably would have ended up killing or taking over his friends, which is not something that he wanted to do. Because the last time he had a friend, he ended up killing him. And I think in that moment, that was, again, something that takes us back to Suicide Squad, which shows when he had made that choice to kill Rick Flagg, it was an emotional thing for him and betray his entire team. In this moment, he could have done the same exact thing, but he didn't. He literally made the more choice to save his friends instead. And I think that's such a great moment. And I really loved how, again, John Cena played in that moment. And I think this is easily some of John Cena's best acting, I think dramatically and comedically. And I just really bravo to him and everyone involved with the show. But of course, they walk out, they pick up Hardcore, they're walking out and we see some people arrive. We see Superman. Wonder Woman, no Batman, The Flash, and of course Aquaman. And we see their silhouettes. So, so for a second, I was like, okay, are we actually going to see them? Or is it just going to be the silhouettes of them? Because you can clearly tell that is Henry Cavill's Superman. You can clearly tell that is Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. You can clearly tell it's Jason Momoa's Aquaman, and of course Ezra Miller's Flash. And for me, I was sitting there, I was like, okay, so are they actually going to talk? Are they not? And I found it funny. We didn't get no Henry Cavill, even though I did, I did guess and theorize that maybe we would. We didn't, but we got a silhouette of him, which is close. You know, I'm still praying that we one day get more Superman from him. No Gaga not talking, but we did get, of course, an exchange between Aquaman, the Flash, and what Peacemaker said is when he mentioned the fish fucking thing. And the Flash is like, that's not, re that's not real. And <laughs> I love when Aquaman, of course, Jason Momoa goes, fuck you, Barry. It was perfect. Would I have liked a little bit more from that cameo? Sure. Would it have taken away from probably the entire emotionality of Peacemaker? Probably. But it worked in that moment, and I loved it. And it was probably very easy for them to do with, like, CGI and stuff like that, and especially with The Flash and Aquaman filming at the exact same time as this. I love this cameo. I thought it worked, and I thought it was cool that they did stay in the realm that this, of course, is, you know, this. Um, that they are still the Justice League. But again, surprisingly, no uh, Ben Affleck... Batman, actually not even surprisingly, wasn't shocked by that, but it was a nice cameo and I flipped and I was like, yes, yes, I felt like Leonardo DiCaprio from Once Upon a Time, he's like, whoop, 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 when he does that when they're watching TV. Uh, overall, love that. And then of course they get to the hospital, everyone's recovering, Vigilante recovers. Freaking Danielle Brooks, uh, uh, what is it, Amanda Waller's mom says, fuck you mom, I'm coming out, and which was a big thing and pretty much came out against her mother and Task Force X and revealed this to the public. And that was a big moment as well, which is interesting to see where maybe that might take us into season two. Of course, we see John is all healed up back at Belle Reeves prison and Harcourt is in physical therapy recovering. This is where it leaves our characters. And of course, Goff with, of course, you have Christopher Smith, Eagly. They're just chilling on the porch. And, you know, we got that nice moment between Harcourt and uh, Christopher Smith. I keep seeing Smith this time around, Peacemaker. And that's where this kind of entire thing ends. We get everything wrapped up and a nice bow, which I think is good because, you know, for some reason it didn't get a season two. It would have been disappointing if it was ended on a cliffhanger, but it ends it in a way that makes me excited for season two, but as well as feel very conclusive to season one. And overall, I love this show. This is one of the biggest shows, probably not even biggest shows, one of the biggest surprises that I've ever experienced watching TV. And I'm sure many of you guys might be feeling the same way. So overall, I'm going to give the entirety of Peacemaker a 9.5 out of 10, or may I just say an 8 out of 10, 8 out of 10, an A. God, I'm tired, guys. I'm so sorry. But I overall love this show. I can't wait to see your guys' thoughts and theories on that cameo and in general, just the action scenes that happen throughout here. And hopefully we don't have to wait too long for season two. But of course, guys, thank you so much for watching this. And until next time, stay classy.